Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our live stream theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a fun, pleasant evening for all. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Your Cinzano Bianco, signora. Uh, uh, Thank you. Ah, yes. Gracias. Ah, do eh? No, 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 no. Mine was a Cinzano as well. Ah, oh, that's better. Uh, oh, can't you just smell those Italian wines? Suffused with herbs and spices, spices from, from four, four continents. Con Why, being boring. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Right. Oh, get in your head now, sweetie. Jolly good idea. From the house of Cinzano, Cinzano Bianco. Now, only one minute till showtime. For your convenience, the refreshment stand will remain open during the show. Ladies and gentlemen, time for the show. Once again, thank you for coming to our theater tonight. Have an enjoyable evening.
of them all. He has the luck, all right. The luck of the devil. He sold arms to a group of freedom fighters in South America so that they could rebel. And then he sold arms to the local government so that they could kill the rebels. A couple of million dollars in the kitty but only about 5,000 dead. Now, who is going to save you helpless idiots from men like these? Who will save you? Our organization is known to its friends as CRASH, K-R-A-S-H. Killing, raping, arson, slaughter, and hit. All our men are experts in unarmed combat. As you see, the training is intense. The one with two eyes is new to CRASH. In this ring, we do not bother with the count of ten. Come, I'll show you something else.
ability with a gun is matched only by his treachery. Each of our operatives is assigned to kill. The man just shot dead was his assignment and his brother. That is indeed treacherous and ruthless. Yes. Each man that reaches the highest level in Crash has these qualities. Just to keep abreast of the times, we're developing a new woman's section. I take it you're impressed by our organization? No. If I can find you, so can the police. We send terrorists and assassins all over the world. The need for secrecy is both obvious and essential. With Crash, it is complete and absolute. I'm glad to hear it. But the fact that I'm here to employ you means that you can be found. Well, if you're not happy. I'll pay you five million to see that anyone who troubles me is eliminated. I'll have no further contact with you, but if I'm happy with your service, you'll get five million every year. You must be a very wealthy man. Determined is a better word. You see, unlike yourself, I can murder openly. I have done so, and I will continue to do so. But then, I have formulated a plan for the perfect murder. Then why do you need Crash? So that my work may continue uninterrupted. Frankly, your subversive operation is no more than a diversion. Keep it warm till I get back. Charles, I might have known. Does he have to interfere with my private life? He didn't exactly get you out of bed. Ah, but he did stop me getting into it. Good morning, sir. Well, Byron, what do you think? I don't know, sir. December the 8th, Martin J. Hasluck, American. Shot leaving Sotheby's. Died leaving five million dollars. December the 15th, Sir Julian Wharton shot outside the Savoy. See, he only left 900,000 pounds. Well, I think so. I think it only goes to show that money can't buy happiness. Very funny. What other bright ideas have you got? Not very many, I'm afraid. They both died in much the same way, and they were very rich, too. As I say, there are too many links connecting the two victims for it to be simple coincidence. Hasluck the American was a pretty valuable friend. He helped us with some of our best economic operations in South America. And Sir Julian Wharton? He was one of Britain's key negotiators in the international money market. Each of these men was in high finance and valuable to Britain. We've been instructed to get to the bottom of it. Start immediately. <laughs> Where? Speaker's Corner, Hyde Park. Intelligence reports some scruffy demagogue made some particularly nasty remarks about these men. Of course, it may be sheer coincidence. See if you can dig him out of whatever hole he lives in and ask him a few questions. Sir? Hang on a minute, Brian. Take off your coat. Why? Take it off. You're licensed to kill Vine, but only with a government issue 38. Yes, well, 38's all very well in a lady's handbag, sir. But my 357 combat magnums can stop an elephant at 200 yards. Yes, but we don't kill elephants, do we? True. Get rid of them. I want to see you wearing that government issue 38 next time you enter this office. Yes, sir. Miss Martin, will you send in Agent Hudson? Good morning, Miss Hudson. 
Good morning, sir. This is Charles Vine. He'll be under his wing. Vine, I'd like you to meet Miss Hudson. She'll be working with you. Look after her, Vine. Like a brother, sir. of those guns, number one. Come back when you've something to report on the case. Is that Miss Hudson? My protege. I'm supposed to keep an eye on you, remember? Well, you can go away. There hasn't even been a breath of excitement. The only danger is I'll probably die of boredom. <laughs> Nothing to report, then? No. Same as last three Sundays. The Salvation Army will be along soon, with a selection of music to be saved by. You must look forward to that. Hmm. I do. Listen, why don't I buy you breakfast? It'll warm you up and revive those drooping spirits. That would be lovely. I know just the place. Soft lights, sweet music, unpretentious cooking. Just the two of us in there. Sounds heavenly. <laughs> Come on, then. Care to try the unpretentious cooking? Like it here? Very cosy. Yes, well, I'm off. I think I'll settle down at home with a good book in front of the fire. Keep up the good work. I certainly wouldn't want you to marry my sister, even if I did have one. You say you traced the car? Mm -hmm. Soda? Yes, please. Say one. I'm soaking! Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, well, you'd better get out of that dress. You'll catch pneumonia. Here. Better put this on. Bet on to my elder brother. Oh. 
We better get down to business. You say you uh, traced the car? Yes, it belongs to a Mr. Arthur Loveday. I wonder why he gives lifts to downtrodden tramps. Loveday. Loveday. It's a name I seem to remember. Probably the Financial Times. He owns a group of companies called Team Toys. You know, they make speedo racing cars, macro models, that type of thing. Quite a success story, really. He started making playthings in a garden shed about 18 years ago. And now he owns four factories and nets about 20 million a year. Shouldn't be too hard to find them. I've already found him. Bulletproof wall is activated whenever a gun is pointed at me. I wonder where our unfriendly Mr. Loveday lives. I know. Wayland Park. It's a huge kind of a shack and a couple of acres of land near Winchester. You'd better pay him a visit then. Sir. Hello, Mr. Bind. I was expecting you to come calling one of these days. I'd heard you were looking for me. I gather you weren't quite expecting me. <laughs> I must admit it hadn't occurred to us that our Hyde Park orator was only a fancy dress tramp. No, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, Mr. Bind. I'd have looked pretty eye-catching standing up there preaching in a black silk dressing gown, now, wouldn't I? <laughs> Do sit down. Now, what can I do for you? Some weeks ago, in one of your perorations, you made some scathing references to two men, Martin J. Hasluck and Sir Julian Wharton. All of them true, maybe. But soon afterwards, each of them got a bullet through his skull. My employer is interested to know who killed them and why. We were thinking, perhaps you might know more about it than we do. Well, Mr. Bind, in a manner of speaking, you might say that I killed them. In what manner of speaking? Let's just say that I killed them. How? Ah, now that would be telling. I see. I don't think you do. Hasluck and Wharton were both very nasty characters. Somebody had to kill them. Now, you tell me something. Why are you so concerned about them? Well, I just have an old-fashioned objection to murder. Mm, that's very unreasonable of you. I thought I was doing the British government a good turn. I think of all those lovely death duties. And to my knowledge, the government doesn't allow its official tax collectors to use firearms. Somehow, Mr. Loveday, I don't think they'd approve of unofficial use of them either. They'll never get a modern Britain that way. Do you mind telling me why you killed them? Mm, certainly. I don't like rich men, myself accepted. And there were good reasons to particularly dislike those two. And that's all there is to it? Yes, Mr. Vine, that's all there is to it. Except, of course, I haven't finished yet. Oh, you mean you've got more people you don't like? Exactly. And you've arranged for them to leave the riches of the world? That's right. They'll suddenly go into the cold like... Uh, Hasluck and Morton. Do you think it's wise, Mr. Loveday? I mean, you do know we're not going to like it. Mm, that's too bad. I'm afraid I've already made my plans. So you could always try to stop me. I never minded a bit of healthy competition. It helps to keep one on one's toes, I always think. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I will stop you, Mr. Loveday. Do you think so? I warn you, Mr. Bind, I don't box with gloves on. Neither do I. Well, then it should be a nice fight. I'd like you to meet stormy weather. You're in trouble with a queen, sweetheart. Hello, Stormy. I'm 
frankly sorry, sir. The operation is legal nowadays. Oh, by the way, I'm taking a trip across the channel the day after tomorrow. I have a little uh, business in Boulogne. My kind of business? Your kind of business. Who's the victim? He is. Oh, I should explain. I'm collecting a kind of high-class rogues gallery. Loveday's finest living dolls. Actually, these are dead ones. Do you recognize them? I can take a guess. Martin J. Haslow can Sir Julian Morton. Right first time, Mr. Bind. And then there'll be this one. Who is that little fellow? Well, he hasn't been finished yet. But when he is, he'll be the spitting image of one Arturo Benvenuti. No, a very bad man. Benvenuti. An Italian financier. That's right. A retired mafia chief, but very respectable nowadays. Bit of a come down after the others, isn't it? I suppose it is, but I've never been snobbish about murder. <laughs> Thanks for the little chat, love, day. You're quite a joker. In the games I play, the joker always wins. Goodbye, Mr. Bind. Oh, by the way... Do you believe in black magic? Neither do I. I'll see you in Boulogne. You say this fellow Loveday admitted he organized these killings? Why? <laughs> I don't know, sir. Why does he regularly turn up in Hyde Park dressed for a tramp's ball? He's eccentric. That's what he is, eccentric. What did you make of him? They seem intelligent, deadly, a little crazy. He also has a fondness for sex change transvestite killers. No, no, I mean, did you believe him? No, I don't know, sir. He's tried to kill me twice already. Perhaps he just doesn't like having his photograph taken. <laughs> hmm, that's very funny. Take off your coat. Why, sir? Get it off! That's better, number one. He's playing games with us. He's one of the wealthiest men in the country. Obviously, he's a joker. Besides, where's his motive? If I live long enough, I'll ask him. He's not our type, not our type at all. And this trip to Boulogne by Channel Ferry. My God, Brian. And this next so-called plan of his. Gunning down Benvenuti, well, I mean. That shows it's all a hoax, doesn't it? That is, sir. Huh? Isn't he prominent in the financial world these days? Yes. But he always has an army of trigger-happy bodyguards around him. Well, Love Day may not be a very convincing villain, but he's the only one we've got. Do you want to take this trip to Boulogne? I'm still not sure about him. Anyway, what have we got to lose? In your case, buy nothing. In my case, I have to answer for your expenses. You really sure about Love Day? It's just the thought of the cruise with Miss Hudson that appeals to you. Cruise, sir? Hour and a half across the channel. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. Just come back with something better than you have so far. Yes, sir. Oh, there's one more thing. I'd be grateful for a full research job on Loveday's background. Won't be time before we leave. All right, I'll send you a cable. Thanks. Bon voyage, number one. Have fun. But not too much fun. That's a magnum. Yes, well, a lot of elephants in Boulogne, sir. <laughs> Alright. 
Over here, Mr. Bind. My dear Bind, I'm delighted to see you. It's going to make this little trip so much more interesting for me. Yes, well, uh, don't you think it's a little early for shipboard romances? The friends of yours? Ah, yes, you haven't met my girls, have you? Let me introduce you. It's uh, Chrissy and Paula Williams. Or Paula and Chrissy Williams, it makes a little difference. The girls, in a way, are learning the business. Yes, well, uh, I can see they're working hard at it. Well, I uh, never do things by halves. <laughs> well, do sit down, Mr. Lyme. What will you have? A scotch on the rocks? Uh, my mother always told me not to drink whiskey before noon. And make it a large brandy. A large brandy, please. And that's what money buys, Mr. Bind. Instant service and a bow that's six inches lower. What else does it buy? Anything you want. Women, war, peace, traitors, even loyalty. Doesn't it, girls? And murder. And murder, Mr. Bind. Uh, let's stroll, shall we? We were talking about murder. Were we? I thought we were talking about money. You won't stop me, you know. It's all part of a plan. A well thought out, carefully organized plan. That's how I made my money. You see, you don't make a few million and keep it by just holding out your hand and waiting for the pennies to drop from heaven. You plan. You think faster and better than your competitors. Then you always win. How about you, Mr. Bind? Do you always win? In my job, I have to. That's true. It's not much of a game for losers. You know, in a funny sort of a way, I almost hope that you'll survive the competition I've arranged. I don't think you will, though. Competition? What competition? Well, it's more of a race, really, between a few of the crew members to see which one kills you first. I've put up a prize of 10,000 pounds. No consolation prize for the losers, I'm afraid. <laughs> Friendly. Uh, don't take it personally, Mr. Bind. Either I stop you or you stop me. You know, you could do with a shade, Mr. Bind. What's it to be, sir? Shave, please. Certainly, sir. Short day. Mr. Bind, isn't it? How do you know my name? Uh, Mr. Loveday asked me to look after you specially. Shave. Hi, Charles. You've had a shave. <laughs> yes, yeah, a close one. How are things below decks? Oh, not bad. I've just been propositioned by an elderly, very rich gentleman. Oh, I thought you fancied me. Well, a girl's got to live. How about you? Made any progress with Love Day yet? I don't know about progress. He's just informed me that he's offered a £10,000 prize for the first crew member to kill me. Friendly. <laughs> That's what I said. If you find out who's in the competition, you will let me know, won't you? Oh, it's the least I can do. Here's the information on Love Day. Rock was just cabled it through. Fine. Oh, incidentally, 
Love Day is accompanied by two beautiful young ladies that he calls his girls. I don't know how much they know, but it might be an idea if you get acquainted with them. Why don't you try your charms on them? I might just do that. Mm. Hello, Mr. Bind. Nice to see you looking so well. You're going to have to do better than you're doing, Love Day. That first effort was very clumsy. One down, two to go, Mr. Bind. Thank you. You're not by any chance a friend of Mr. Loveday's, are you? Who? <laughs> Never mind. What's Rockwood news on Loveday? I was just going to read it. Oh, a waterbed! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's mine. <laughs> I had it installed in case we ran aground. <laughs> Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. I was just moving it out of the way, and look what happened. <laughs> you better slip into something dry. Like your skin. Yes, Charles. <clears throat> Subject, Arthur Loveday. Purpose, general inquiry. Full name, Arthur Ebenezer Loveday, born 1923, son of Thomas Loveday, carpenter, and Marjorie Loveday, housewife. Mother killed in car accident in 1944. Father died in prison after being arrested on a theft charge. Arthur's education limited to eight years state education. According to teacher, a quiet boy with average ability, very religious. From 1936 to 1941, apprenticed to Jones Beamish Furniture Manufacturers as a cabinet maker. Joined the army in 1941. Returned to Britain in 1946. From 1946 for... Ooh, can I help? Thank you. All right. Uh, from, 19, from 1946 to 1948 was a tramp. Came into contact with a religious society in Manchester, made model kits for children working from a small garage, then started building them professionally. Business flourished and expanded from the start, now owns several factories all over the world and lives in style. Travels a great deal by sea. Favoured destinations, New York, Nice and Bern. Gives away large sums to charities, friendship societies, religious groups, and the RSPCA. Rockwall, head of MI5, Ministry, Whitehall, London, SW1. Well, what do you make of that lot? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Would you repeat it? Oh, forget it. At least he had guts. Yes, and they're all over the deck. You just saved me 10,000 pounds. You know, sometimes I think you're working for my bank manager. Three down, none to go, love day. No, I wouldn't say that. Incidentally, the next time we meet, you must introduce me formally to Miss Hudson. Charming girl. I think I might have got on very well with her, if only circumstances had been different. <clears throat>
At least I won't have to cut my toenails this Saturday. Very switched on, sweetie. You're yeah, not by any chance a friend of Mr. Loveday's. Mmm! You're trying to bite my jugular vein. Playful, aren't you? Oh, you're very tasty, Mr. Vine. Just another little nip. I don't mind being eaten, darling, but not like this. Oh! Ah. Fangs for the memory. Fangs ain't what they used to be. I'm the clean shaved kid. You got about 20 seconds to live. I don't believe it. Big enough for the both of us. Two days and he hasn't left the hotel. Neither of the girls. He must have come to organize Ben Venuti's killing. In order to do that, he's got to make contact with somebody. Do you think his contact man might be one of the hotel staff after all? No. They've all been thoroughly checked and they're very clear. He must have outside help. I wish Rockwell would get a new photocopier. This stuff in the post office is practically unreadable. <laughs> What's in old Loveday's mail today? Oh, same usual old things. A couple of bills, a letter of thanks for a donation from the RSPCA, a letter asking for a donation from the Dog Lovers League. Oh, yes, and this is fun. Listen to this. <laughs> it's from an organization called the Brothers of Light. Dear brother, we have read with approval your reflections in the theme of welcome. You have included some very pertinent facts, and the general organization of the material is excellent. Your soul shows a progression in enlightenment. Good old Loveday. What's he doing? Taking a correspondence course on the saving of souls. Looks like it. I didn't know Loveday had a mystical streak. Didn't you? His schoolmaster's put him down as a very religious lad. I hadn't noticed. <sighs> I tried to warn Benvenuti. What did he say? Thanked me very politely. Said it was nice to have strangers worrying about his health. I think he thought the whole thing was a huge joke. I'm beginning to wonder myself. <laughs> gotcha. Oh! <laughs> Charles, do you have to do that? I'm sorry, darling, but in that shirt, I just can't control myself. Oh. Why don't you uh, slip into something more comfortable? Of course I will. Because I'm meeting Lovedy in ten minutes, and he's going to show me the sights of Boulogne. Yes, why not? I can recommend the Chambry. It's an excellent vintage. Sounds splendid. Chambry for Madame and the Scotch for myself. Oh, make that a double whiskey for the gentleman. Double, Madame. Thank you. Why? Ben Venuti is dead.
don't know now, but Mr. Mastermind is coming our way. Good evening, Miss Hudson, Mr. Bind. Talk of the devil. Oh, come now, Mr. Bind, I'm wearing a halo today. I got it for making the world a little bit cleaner. Yeah, you might have it done. <laughs> Feel free. We were just talking about Benvenuti. Oh, you heard that. Oh, that's a pity. I want it to be a surprise. Oh, it was. Well, sort of. I warned you there wasn't much point in coming. If I were you, I should cut my losses and go home now. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. What's this? Celebration? I give you a toast, Mr. Bind. To a clean new world. It's a pity you're against me. A great pity. <laughs> yes, well, that's life. I'm afraid for you, Mr. Bind, it's more like death. So, it doesn't do to be morbid, does it? <laughs> no. Oh, by the way, I'm going to a health farm for a few days. This is such a tiresome business. Why don't you join me? Rockwell's going to go mad when he finds out the price tag for one grapefruit juice a day. I'll get my right arm for a plate of spaghetti. We've only been here for two hours, Charles. Do you think Loveday's really here for a rescue, or do you think he's up to something more sinister? Well, there's no one of any importance within a radius of 25 miles. So unless he's got very highly powered binoculars, he won't be able to witness his handiwork from here. Besides, he'd tell us so he can have an audience. Hey, Rockwell should know we're back. Yeah, I'll give him the glad news. This place. We're going to eat at Rockwell's expense, did you call it? No, I thought I'd let you do it. Hello? Is Mr. Bind with you? Yes, he's here. For you. Hello? Is that Mr. Bind? Yes. I can give you some information that will get Love Day behind bars. Can you meet me? Anytime you like. My life is in danger. I must see you. Within the hour. Hayes Wolf. I know it. Someone wants to sell some information. Probably loved you up to one of his little tricks again. Who's to say it's not genuine? He must have some enemies. And you're number one, darling. <laughs> what have I got to lose? Only your life. True. Don't forget dinner. Been delivered for you. Thank you. Oh, dinner. <laughs> uh, can you put it over there, please? Am I intruding? Uh, she had a little trouble filing her nails. How sad. Uh, I came to keep you company in Mr. Bynes's absence. Oh, um, that's all right, darling. I've got a dinner date with him in an hour. I should cancel the table and make arrangements for Mr. Bynes's funeral. Thank <laughs> you. 
warm welcome. Pieces in a crisis. Do we not spoil my looks? No. All the girls will still love you. Reassure me. Oh. Some other time. Now keep still or you'll get antiseptic in your eye. Where were you when I needed you? I was rather busy myself. There's one thing I can't stand, it's violence. Well, you're in the wrong job, aren't you? Not really. I don't mind being violent. What I hate is people being violent to me. You're still in the wrong job. I'm going to stop being nice to love day. I've been turning the other cheek so much, I'm beginning to get a pain in the neck. Then why isn't the bandage round your neck? I think you should go home, Mr. Bind, and stop wasting your time following me around. Now at your own funeral. <laughs> uh, get well soon. Good evening, Anna. What's with the Anna bit? Always used to be Miss Hudson. I think he likes me. Do you know, in an odd sort of a way, I think he likes you too. I've got a funny way of showing it. Can we eat now? Thirty-six dead mercenaries? I know you're licensed to kill number one, but this is ridiculous. How am I to explain the body count to the PM? Very clever of you to have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted in your car. Yes, sir. But we can't make a habit of it, can we? No, sir. You've been spending government money buying them. What have you got to show for it? A bruised head, sir. Yes, well, you'll be for the high jump if you don't come up with the results soon. A PM wants results, number one. There he is. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now it's my turn. I was wondering when you'd turn up again. Well, you've been practicing. It's a good bow. Yes, one of my factories make them. It's a new line for Christmas. Uh, have you ever considered changing jobs? Not since I was in the army. Doesn't my present job suit me? There's no prospects. Besides, it doesn't suit me. I'd pay you well. It's a good shot. You're trying to buy me off. You're a man of integrity, Mr. Bind. My organization needs people like you. Yes, well, I'm quite happy with my job the way it is. Where are we going next? I'm not inviting you this time. Why not? Because I happen to like you, Mr. Bind, and I don't want to have to kill you. Then why lead us right to your front door? <laughs> Hide by a corner, and that's a weakness of mine. Yes, that and blatantly admitting that you were organizing a series of murders. I'm not a young man, Mr. Bind. There are very few real pleasures left for me. One of them is outsmarting stupid policemen. Believe me, I could pile the clues so high you'd trip over them and still not get to the bottom of my plan. You'll never stop me, Mr. Bind. We can't let you go on killing people now, can we? 
Did you know that my father died in prison? Yes. The police were too stupid to see that he wasn't a criminal, but a sick and desperate man. Desperate men, Mr. Bind. They're the ones who get things done in this world. Are you flaunting your scheme of murders in front of us as a kind of retribution? Well, let's just say that I enjoy the game. It's a kind of sport with me. Blood sport. And so is fox hunting. There's a telephone call from the office for you, sir. Thank you. I'll take it in the study. Goodbye, Mr. Bind. My father was out of work for five years. Uselessness ate into him like cancer. You will select the victims when you've reached the fifth stage of enlightenment. The men of wealth and corruption will always be there. I was only ten years old when I wrote to these men. Ah, Anna, come in. You're just in time. Take your clothes off and relax. I have some news and some food. Is Rockwell fussing about our expenses? No, I've managed to convince him that we don't drink champagne for breakfast. <laughs> Aren't you hungry? <laughs> oh! Ah, you look so lovely when you're wet. Sorry, darling. We've all gone to the laundry. Listen to this. What is it? Conversation between Loveday and his birds over dinner in Boulogne. Cost our dear boss Rockwell 200 pounds to have the table bugged. Would you believe 12 solid hours of tape and not a hint of how it's done? This is the most interesting thing on it. Begging them to give my father a job. Not one answered. When my father went to prison, it broke my heart, and I swore vengeance. You must have this kind of faith. Follow your instructions, chapter and verse. Chapter and verse? It's a strange way of describing their instructions. Sounds more like a religious seminar than instructions for assassins. Exactly. Do you remember when we were sifting through Loveday's mail? We found an uplifting message from the Brothers of Light. Yeah. I'm beginning to wonder if that's the way that Loveday communicates with his organizations. The Brothers of Light using high-minded quotes to conceal low-minded purposes. Sounds like Loveday's sense of humor. There's only one snag. The Brothers of Light is a genuine organization. I read the advertisement in the Occult Gazette. What are you doing reading the Occult Gazette? I'm a witch. <laughs> Doesn't help me. Listen, have we still got that letter? It's in the file at my place. I'll better have a look at it. If it's promising, I'll have a talk with the Brothers of Light. They're in Manchester, Charles. Prove to me you're a witch. Enchant me. business.
tight squeeze. May I speak to Reverend Braithwaite, please? I beg your pardon. Uh, Mr. Braithwaite, may I see him, please? Can anyone else help you? Oh, sister. I, I have a problem. It's these desires, you see. I need to be close to people, especially women. Especially women of faith. I want to undress them. Oh, really? Tell me, are you a real sister? No. Just a lay sister. <coughs> Um, I'm expecting a Mr. Forbes. Has he come yet? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure he will. Can I have your name, please? Uh, Kenneth Forbes. I have an appointment with Brother Braithwaite. Last door on the right at the end of the passage. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. Come, <coughs> come in. <coughs> My flowers needed water. Most of the time, of course, they raised their heads to the light. Sometimes the effort is just too much for them, as it is often too much for us poor mortals. And we also need refreshment in order to keep our minds alert. Won't we sit down? Right, Mr. Forbes. What can I do to help you? It's... it's... these desires, you see. Yes, yes, quite so. They won't give me peace. The images keep going round and round in my head, crackling and burning. It all goes back to when I was at boarding school. So, when I saw your advertisement, I also saw hope, Mr. Braithwaite. For the first time in my life, I saw hope. You'd just call me Brother Walter, would you? Of course, it is somewhat unusual for me to interview souls personally, but I can see that, uh, in your case, the need is very great. Uh, tell me, was it just our advertisement that drew you to us? No, 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 not just that. I heard that some eminent men subscribe to your beliefs, and I must confess that that influenced my decision. It's very wise, Mr. Forbes, very wise. Yes, we do have some top people souls. I understand that Mr. Loveday has attained the fifth stage of enlightenment. Why did such a wealthy man join you? Why did such a wealthy man join us? Well, the answer is very simple, Mr. Forbes. Brother Loveday was once very poor. In fact, I well remember him. Coming in here many years ago, a thin, pale lad, and asking me to help him. That was Brother Loveday? Yes, that's right. He'd been sleeping in the streets and hadn't eaten for two days. So we fed him, gave him a job fixing toys for our charity organizations, and found him somewhere to live. A room that's down the road, number 13, I think it was. Unlucky number. Unlucky for some, Mr. Forbes, but not for him. You know, I don't think I've ever seen such an expression of joy in a boy's eyes in my life before. So, the rest is history, isn't it? He became a millionaire. And a very generous one at that. In fact, it's his donations that are keeping the doors open for other lost souls, such as you, Mr. Forbes. Now, to your problem, Mr. Forbes. Ah, yes. <clears throat> well, uh, I've got an appointment in 20 minutes. Perhaps I could drop back tomorrow and discuss salvation with you. Or Sister Jane? Please do, Mr. Forbes, please do. But I think I should point out that Sister Jane is just a lay sister.
yet. Are you the owner of the house? No. But whatever you're selling, we don't want it. Uh, I'm trying to locate him, Mr. Loveday. He lived here a long time ago. Uh, you'd be too young to remember, perhaps. One of the older tenants, Mike. Oh, well, uh, I think the only person who'd be likely to remember is a Mr. Sims. Uh, he's on first floor, number three. Oh, here he is. Uh, Mr. Sims, this gentleman is enquiring about one of the older tenants. Uh, I thought perhaps you might help him. Uh, Mr. Loofday. No, I, uh, I never knew Arthur Loofday. So I'm uh, meditating and seeking enlightenment. You're not sure about the Brothers of Light? Sad thing is, I'm convinced they're genuine. And Mr. Sims? He doesn't know anything. Back to square one. Oh, by the way, Rockhorse had the bodies at Hayes Wharf checked out. He thinks they belong to an organization called Crash. Do you think they're Loveday's paid assassins? No, they'd be doing themselves out of business if they worked for Loveday. He's already killed two of their best clients. So, Crash is for our benefit. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're off to a small hotel in Kensington. Sharing? Purely business, Charles. Why a small hotel in Kensington? Because that is where Love Day is. Good evening. You sure you won't have one? No, thank you, Charles. I think, um... I think I'll turn in now. Can I come up and read you a bedtime story? No, thank you, Charles. I know how that story ends. Why don't you tell it to Goldilocks? I might just do that. Mr. Loveday, isn't it nice to see a friendly face? Not yours, Mr. Vine. I told you, you were not invited. I know, I wouldn't have come. But I had to ask you something. How does one attain the fifth stage of enlightenment? By minding one's own business, Mr. Vine. Something you'll never learn to do. And the Brothers of Light. Is that your business, Mr. Loveday? Not a business, more a philanthropic foundation. They hold the truth for those who have the time to see it. In your case, Mr. Bind, I would say that would be rather less than 24 hours. Good night, Mr. Bind. Sleep well. Another cognac, please. Small, medium, or family size? Oh, big one. Um, What's the lady drinking? Gin and tonic. Large one. My name's Charles Bine. Do you make a habit of being the most beautiful girl in the room? I'm the only girl in the room, Mr. Bine. True. Oh. oh. I figured you for a whip man, but uh, guns? Now, that is different. Yes, well, I have uh, oh. this insecurity problem. Oh. Get your clothes off. Well, I thought you were going to do that. <laughs> All right. Anything you say. <sighs> yes, well, uh, the insecurity soon passes. Oh? Why don't we... Lie down and talk about it.
Aren't you glad that Mummy Bear was there? <coughs> Thank you for your assistance. That's all right. Next time, be more careful choosing your playmates. Oh, dear. Good morning, Anna. I see you're still with us, Mr. Bind. Isn't life full of little surprises? Come on, girls. By the way, the next victim is going to be a surprise for you. Ah, just like Christmas. No, I, I never knew Arthur loved it. and go and see if there's a gun license in Sims's name. Hmm. Yes, boss. Report. Gerald Sims, born 1920, Manchester, son of James and Rose Sims. Public school and university. No war service has Arthur. Hmm? Doesn't work. Lists from an anonymous trust fund set up in 1955. No gun license, no driving license, but has a pilot's license and owns a Piper Cub. He owns a light aircraft. There's a long shot, but you better check out all the small airfields in and around London. You think he might be flying in from Manchester? He'll be here, all right. Love Day's only checked into this hotel for two days. One day's gone, so the next victim goes today. Hmm. How do you figure this madman? We've tapped his phone, taped his conversations. The post office intercepts his mail. We've watched him and his girls day and night, nothing. He tells us who he's going to kill, where and when, and on the day, he's watching like a vulture. You better call Rockwell. He'll cut down the red tape. Well, I can't call him from here, can I? Go and see him in his office. We need quick answers. Still in his room. Message for you, sir. Thank you. You're looking for a taxi? The lady is. I'll take care of it. Taxi! Do be careful, Charles. You run along. I'll see you later. You're some lady killer.
performer. You make a very good target sitting there. Yes. It's like the last shootout in a western. The two of us alone. Mine's bigger than yours, Love Day. Give up. Did you enjoy my surprise? Some surprise. Don't turn around quickly, Mr. Bind. Get the gun, sunshine. Alan, do you think we should give our Mr. Bind a sporting chance? Uh, regrettably, Miss Hudson has, um, gone into the cold. I'm sorry about her demise, but I shall enjoy yours. Uh, this is sunshine. Uh, he really enjoys killing. Hello, sunshine. Alan. Do you think Sunshine could kill Mr. Bind with his bare hands? He could take two of him for breakfast. Your day has come, Mr. Bind. Unfortunately, my money's on Sunshine. I've seen him killing men with his bare hands. Kill. That wasn't very sporting of you, Alan. Well done, Mr. Bind. Now you can play a little game with me. Sit down. You really should have got a license for sunshine. Now for our little game. What's all this about? You cause me considerable trouble. It's very tiresome of you, very tiresome. I don't know how you managed it, but there it is. You'll surely appreciate why I had to get Anna out of the way and why I must kill you. Oh, yes, of course. But tell me, how did you get Sims to kill for you? Money, Mr. Bind. And plus the fact that he's a man after my own heart, a man who hates the takers of the world. But he took money from you. 
I provided a 500,000 pound trust fund, it's true. But he used the money to educate his children and make his mother comfortable in her old age. Ah, a dedicated and soft-hearted killer. What about the two girls? My fledglings. Women can be as deadly as men, don't you agree? In ten years' time, each of them will begin her blood mission. I'll have no further contact with my girls except to witness their killings. But how will you know when they'll be doing their duty? Each will inform me of her liquidations through the personal columns of the Times. The message will look like an advertisement, but uh, when it's decoded, I'll know who they're killing and when. <laughs> Murders planned ten years in advance? Yes. A kind of uh, pay-now-kill-later plan. The choice of victims varies, but it'll keep a little surprise in an old man's life. I admire your scheme, and even your motives. But you are mad, Loveday. We shall see. Fate will show which of us is right. Now, this revolver has only one chamber loaded. I shall spin the cylinder and fire at you and then at myself in turn. It's your turn. I'm afraid I can't wish you luck. Listen, this could get rather noisy. Why don't we just cut cars? I've got a pack in my room. No, I'm not worried about noise, Mr. Bind. I own this hotel. We are the only people here. Fate doesn't seem to be able to make up its mind. Aren't you beginning to have your doubts, Loveday? <gasps> Told you we should have cut cards. You shouldn't have number one. I didn't, sir. They're for your nurse. The one with the big knockers. You'll notice, number one, I don't waste public money. No. I insisted on a public ward. Mm. So you had all the patients moved out first? Yes, well, we have to maintain top security. Uh, you really ought to be more careful getting out of your bath, sir. Oh, oh. oh frankly, sorry, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Get on with your report, number one. Yes, sir. Uh, well, we've uh, closed down crash. We lost four operatives, but they are now well and truly defunct. Oh, good. And what about Loveday's girls? They've both been arrested, sir. There's somebody at the end of the ward who wants to talk to you. Thank you, sir. It's nice to see you looking better. Oh! Ah! Get a nurse! talk it over sometime.
Please remember to replace the speaker on the post when you leave the theater.